Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. Today, we're gonna do more 3D, but I have a couple of announcements before we go. Uh, or well, not before we go, before we start, rather. Uh, so first of all, new month, new challenges, new learning paths, and new courses as well. I'm working on a new course that I'm gonna be sneak peeking in the next video. So make sure to stay tuned if you wanna know what the next uh, course is gonna be, because it's uh, it's one that has been asked for, be uh, like people have been asking for it. And um, I've been trying to prepare the best possible version that I can offer to you guys. And yeah, it's gonna be coming really really soon. So stay tuned for that one Make sure to heal, hit the subscribe button and the little like bell icon to get the notifications so that you don't miss anything Okay, now second uh, we are gonna have a live stream this month We're gonna have our live stream at the end of the month in the very same way how we had it on the last month It was a huge success. There were a lot of people watching the live stream and we had a lot of fun So make sure to tune in. It's probably gonna be let me check the calendar here real quick It's probably gonna be on March 30. Uh, that's probably going to be the day uh, where we're going to be airing the live stream, how we usually do it at the end of the month. So, yeah, just stay tuned for that one as well. Another little announcement is that we are uh, going to have our portfolio review. That's another thing that people have been asking for. We're going to have our, our new portfolio review in uh, two weeks. So, not this weekend, but next weekend on Saturday 12th and uh, Sunday the 13th. We're going to save all of the elements. The link is already available, so you can check it down here in the description. There's going to be a Google Drive link. You can go in there, and as long as you have an account, you can create a little folder and drop in your portfolio in there so that I can review it. Remember, it doesn't have to be the, the finished portfolio. If you're working on a piece and you want me to take a look at it, like give you some feedback on like a Seaver sculpture or like a Maya model or something, you can also drop the file there, and I'll be happy to download it and, uh, and do a little bit of review for that one. And uh, yeah, I think that those are all of the announcements so far. Um, so yeah, let's go into a 3D world. Let's go here into the mainstream, there we go. And today we're gonna be working, or we're gonna start a new mini project. And uh, this is what I found. I was looking at Reddit and uh, I found this, a very amazing weapon called a Momentum by Rudok Stabern. It's a Patreon. Um, he makes like magic items for Dungeons and Dragons, and I found it was. And I, I saw this one, and it, I, I really liked it. it. It looks really, really, really cool. So I think we can we can make this into a project. But not only are we gonna sculpt and um, and texture this guy, I'm also gonna be bringing this guy into Unreal Engine Five. So again, stay tuned. Make sure to uh, to like the channel here to to see the the next videos. Today we're gonna be focusing on the, the sculpting part of things. Then we're gonna have a video on texturing, and finally we're gonna do a little bit of a rigging, and then bring it into uh, Unreal because I, I kind of want this thing to be animated as well. So like an animated weapon. Um, okay, so the first question that you should ask yourself whenever you have a project such as this one is, how do I start? Like, am I gonna start this in Maya? Am I gonna start this in ZBrush? Am I gonna start this in Blender? Like, what software gonna, am I gonna start this uh, at? And I think due to the geometric aspect of it, it might be a little bit easier to start it in Maya or in Blender, in any of the like the traditional 3D packages, unless you're really good at C Modeler. C Modeler could also um, like help us create the shapes that we want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open Maya real quick. Maya. There we go. And uh, while Maya is opening, let's take a quick look at the concept and let's see how many pieces do we have. From what I can tell, we have two big like spiky pieces right here. We have the handle right here. We have this uh, element that's floating. And then this big, uh, it's, this will be like the sword part of things. Uh, in games nowadays, there's a lot of weapons that don't make any sense. I mean, this is of course a fantastical uh, weapon, uh, but as long as it looks cool and it, and it fulfills the role that we're uh, going for, uh, that, that's usually more than enough, right? So yeah, uh, I'm gonna go here into Maya. I'm gonna go into my front view. And right now I have not placed my image in our, um, like our project settings. I'm gonna just to save a little bit of time and keep it, I'm gonna keep it that way. I'm just gonna grab it right here. And usually, usually you wanna model weapons so that the uh, pommel is on the origin. So right about there. Because the origin point is where the character is gonna be grabbing or we're gonna be using like later on a bone right there. So it's easier to parent everything to that specific point. Now, of course, this image has a little bit of perspective. So here's where our uh, like artistic approach is gonna come into play and we're gonna be like modifying a couple of things to make sure that this looks as nice as possible. So let's start with the big blade. I think that's probably the easiest one. So I'm gonna start with a cube. And first I'm gonna like trace the, the, like, the proper shape of the element. So I'm gonna grab this two vertices up here. I'm gonna bring them up and right about there, these things go in. Again, I'm not tracing exactly the, the, the shape right there, like the sword, 
because uh, as we've mentioned before, uh, this is uh, it has perspective to it, right? So, so I'm just tracing the general volume of the thing. So that will be about there. Let's grab this image and bring it down or back. I'm gonna grab this face and this face. We're gonna extrude both of them to get a little bit more volume. This upper section, we're gonna make it smaller so that it works like the like the tip of the element. And this one, we're gonna make it smaller as well. There we go. So that's the general shape of the of the element, right? However, uh, we can definitely tell here that the object has like this slanted view. Like if we were to see this from the, let me, let me open Krita. Um, I think I've mentioned this before, but the Huion tablets have something wrong with them in the drivers. And if you have Photoshop and the uh, and the uh, ZBrush open, uh, it doesn't work. So if we were if we're seeing this blades straight through, I would expect it to be like this this shape, right? So that means that on this side, I need to collapse the edges. And then I also need this sort of like pointy edge on the top. So first, I'm going to add one section right there in the middle. Then I'm going to select all of the outer edges, and I'm going to say mesh, collapse. Where is it? Edit mesh collapse, that's going to give me the proper border. And as you can see, that's also going to give me like the sharp edge on the on the side. Now, uh, it does seem to be a little bit um, like wider here on the on the bottom part. So here, for instance, I think I'm gonna grab this edges again, control E, move them down. And instead of collapse, collapsing them, I'm just gonna like scale them like this. It's a little bit asymmetrical, we're gonna deal with the asymmetry inside of ZBrush. So that guy right there, we're just gonna fill the hole. And let's cut this so that we have a perfectly like a like a side view. Same thing over here, just to keep things clean. All of these guys, well, before that cut, all of those guys were just gonna merge to the center. And now everything is a triangle. Seeing it from the side view, one thing I do wanna do is I wanna grab this guy right here, just give them a little bit more sharpness like that. So now the shape of my sword is looking, is looking nice. Now I'm gonna help myself here a little bit. I'm gonna just bevel the whole thing, give it two segments and a small fraction. And uh, that's not really gonna like do anything, but give it like a little bit more like a like a sharpness, like the sharpness that I'm going for. Um, because eventually we're gonna turn this into dynamesh. Like this is not the topology that we're gonna be using. We're gonna be uh, doing something uh, completely different. So now we have the first piece, that's fine. This piece right here, that's pretty much a cube. As you can see, it's a cube. It's rotated 45 degrees. Quick trick here, press E and click and you're going to select like the option, I'm going to change this to discrete rotate so that it rotates in in steps. Now I did change something here, I'm going to double click the, the rotation tool. And on the step snap, I'm going to change this back to 45 or actually 15 is usually the, the number So it's going to be one, two, three, that's 45. I'm going to freeze the transformations. And then I'm going to do one, two, three. Or actually, no, I think we're just going to keep it like that. And trying to think. No, actually, <clears throat> we need to this is it's, it's it is a cube, it's not like a perfect cube. So it's like a 45 degree cube. There we go. So something like that. It's a little bit more like it, I think. Or or if this is becoming a little bit too complicated, no problems, we just rotate this around. Let's do 45 degrees, I'm gonna add a middle section. And then I'm going to select that middle section, scale it up. And then just grab the top points and the bottom points and scale them down. And then scale them up. And that gets closer to the to the shape that we're going for again, the little blue thing that I'm seeing there, no need to worry about it just yet, we're going to be adding that uh, later on inside of Seabrush. The whole thing, I also want to do a quick bevel to the whole thing, just two segments to make sure that we don't have any triangles. Um, and that's it, that, that would be my, my shape. I think on the concept, it's a little bit, it's not like perfectly round. So I'm going to freeze the transformations and push it in a little bit on the on the C axis. So it's a little bit flatter. There we go. That's the that's the second section of the sword. Now for the uh, next section, I can see that this is kind of like a hexagon, because you can see this flat section right here. And then this like, um, like sides to the to the whole thing. So I'm going to go with a cylinder and change the options to six sides. So it's going to be like a six sided cylinder. Again, there, it's in perspective. So don't worry too much about that. Let's move this thing down. It's like the like the beginning of the hexagon. And then this things right here, there are squares, I can see that they're they only have four sides to them. So I'm gonna go with a cube. 
I can see that the cube is rotated like this, and it's probably rotated like 45 degrees angle right there. Let's select the lower face, that one, control E, and then control E, rotate this on the camera view, so that we match it right there, and there we go. Can move this a little bit there, and I'll probably wanna make this vertices smaller. Probably flatter as well. There we go. Because it seems like from that point, it breaks off and it creates this other like spikes. Um, so that's how we get that sort of like shape. Uh, it seems to be, again, phrase transformation just slightly slimmer on this side. So it's not perfectly like square. And then this, of course, we're gonna mirror. In this case, it's gonna be mirror world on X axis positive. So that we bring it to this side. There we go. Now this piece right here, as you can see, it, it, it goes in. So I'm gonna select this vertice. Control F11, Control E, push this in, and then just scale this in. And that line seems to be a little bit like higher, so I'm gonna add one more line right about there. And with Control and click, I'm just gonna like move this thing uh, forward like this. And again, I would expect this pommel not to be perfectly uh, circular and be a little bit more like a like a like a plain shape right there. Yeah. Now I do think these are a little bit thick here on the on the inside, so I'm gonna. Move them and scale them, same for this ones. Just to get make them a little bit more aesthetic and so that the little like rhomboid shape that we have there fits a little bit better. Now, a very easy way to create the, those spikes is just grab that face and I'm gonna say uh, Control E to extrude. I'm gonna extrude all the way to the top, like that. With my cut tool, let's cut right there. Again, cut tool. Go to object mode, cut tool. There we go. Now this face is right there. In face mode, I'm gonna get rid of them. Let's move them closer to where they're supposed to be, which is about there. Then we then make them a little bit bigger. There we go. As you can see, they're not perfectly aligned, and, and we're gonna be changing them and moving them around. They're like magic stones, so so no big deal there. And uh, that's it. I can just delete this thing again. Uh, for this one, let's just select object mode, and I'm going to say mesh, fill hole. That's going to fill both uh, like the square holes that we have there. And now we're going to, again, mirror. So object mode, right-click, shift, mirror. We're going to mirror world on the positive side. I think I don't have my car neck thing turned on. Let me... Do you guys know that there's a superhero named Karnak from Marvel? He's from the Inhumans. He's one of my favorite superheroes. It's got a very cool power. There we go. So now, uh, of course, like I can see that they're like slightly asymmetrical. So for instance, this guy, I'm just gonna move this vertices like down here and this vertices like over there. Yes, there's gonna be a little bit of extra work inside of Cirrus because we're gonna have to uh, mold them uh, separately or sculpt them separately, but it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Now, uh, grab all of them. Uh, we're, we're still missing this thing uh, down here. So uh, for this thing, again, you can see that it's, it's flat. So if we see it from the, from the side or from the front, it's also gonna have this sort of shape with the difference that it's gonna be cut in the middle, probably, because it has the, the hole, right? So uh, this one, I think it's a little bit easier if we uh, very quickly trace it. So here's how I'm gonna do it. I am gonna go into Mesh Tools, Create Polygon, and we're gonna create one big poly right here. And then with Quad Draw, I'm just gonna draw like this guy's right here going around. I don't really care about uh, edge loops because again, we're gonna be sculpting. This is just like a like a basic sculpting thing. Let's uh, center the pivot point, move this thing to the side, grab all of the inner vertices, snap them together and with X, snap them to the grid like that. Now we're gonna mirror this. There we go. We can fix some of this like pointy area down here. There we go. Um, the size seems to be a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna make it just slightly smaller. Extrude to create this, and now I'll just grab the outer edge and collapse. Mesh tools, edit mesh, collapse. And that's gonna give us the sort of effect that we're going for. Of course, we can exaggerate the, the intensity. Let's center the pivot point. Exaggerate this, uh, like the intensity of the, of the collapse, like this. And um, of course, I can see that uh, this thing merges onto 
onto the piece, right? Like about there. So I would expect to have a little bit more volume here on the on the other side. So I might be tempted to just give it this a, a bevel, just a small one, not super intense, just just something to have there. Uh, and there we go. So we have the base mesh for our sword. This is just again, this is just the base mesh. We're not doing or we haven't done any sort of like sculpting just yet. This is just the base mesh. So I'm gonna grab everything, combine it into a single object. It's gonna be easier that way. File, export selection. Oop. Uh, well, first I'm gonna triangulate everything. So mesh, triangulate, just to make sure that there's no angons. File, export selection. And now I, I think it's important to export it to our to our assets folder. So next to live assets, let's create a new one. It's called this momentum. That's the name of the of the sword. Uh, this guy created a, a very cool like uh, like like uh, abilities for this uh, weapon. So for instance, I think you could throw it and it would continue to move. It was following like the three laws of uh, of uh, movement from Newton. So I think one of them is an object will continue in motion unless an external force uh, affects it. So this thing would move forward and if it hits something, it would damage it uh, until a certain like distance. Really cool, really creative, to be honest. And the, and the art is, is amazing as well. So yeah, now let's jump into, into ZBrush. Uh, we, can, yeah, we can close Maya. I don't think we're gonna use it anymore. Uh, we're, we're, I, I'm looking at the time right now and it'll probably take us one more class to do, <laughs> to do the whole thing. So I'm gonna start with the basic like sculpting right now and then we'll, uh, we'll continue working on, the, on another video probably because um, even though I would love to make a two hour long video, um, unfortunately the algorithm in, in YouTube does not like when you do like super, super long videos. And um, yeah, I, I know it, it's unfortunate, but we need to play uh, with, the, with how the technology works as well. So yeah, let's go import. Let's go to our projects. Let's go next to live. Assets and look for momentum. There we go. Select the base mesh and open. Now this is an FBX. So it's gonna ask if I want to import anything else. I really don't. So I'm just gonna hit OK. There's the asset. Hit T to go into edit mode, and uh, we're ready to start working. So the first, very first thing that I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go into geometry. I'm gonna go into dynamesh, and I'm gonna turn on polish and turn on dynamesh. Now, as you can see, uh, what's happening here is since some of these objects are really close to each other, we're um, kind of like combining them. And that's something that I do not want. So to avoid that, there's a couple of different ways. One, we can increase the, the dynamic resolution and uh, the higher the resolution, um, the, the less likely things are going to be like uh, joining together. But the easiest and most like a uh, like professional way to do it is to go into polygroups. You can see right now everyone or everything is a single polygroup and just say group other groups over here, other groups. So now every island that's detected as a single island will be like polygrouped differently. Now, I, I do wanna keep the handle as a single one. So I'm gonna press Control, Shift, Alt, and I'm gonna hide this polygroup right here. Like that, so that only the pommel is right here. I'm gonna say group visible. And now we have one polygroup for each piece. Well, except for that one. Let's select or hide all of this guys. Uh, actually just control alt click and I'm just gonna invert the selection and start hiding this guys so that we have that guy. Let's invert, hide that, invert. There we go. Now again, group visible and we should only have this polygroups. Uh, those ones, I'm also a little bit concerned about those ones. Like all of that, that's that's not good. We, we wanna keep everything as a single polygroup. So again, let's do an easy one. Let's do other groups first and then I'm just gonna hide like all of the polygroups that I don't want until we only are left with this guy right here. Now we group visible, and now we should have only like this amount of polygroups. Geometry, and we hit uh, groups as well, and click dynamesh. And now, as you can see, each group will only dynamesh with itself. Yes, we'll get some artifacts here and there, but that's fine. Um, it's, it's part of the of the element. I do think I need a little bit more resolution. Let's do dynamesh, and there we go. So now, as you can see, we have a really, really nice effect here. Now, uh, the hole here didn't like properly create the dynamics that I wanted. So uh, I think the best way to do this is use our uh, knife uh, curves, this ones. So I'm gonna just try and delete. Oh, <laughs> ZBrush did not like that. No problem, let's just go back. That's one of the issues with 3D, right? Um, every now and then softwares will crash. Yes, it says it, tries, it, it will try to recover something, but uh, I know ZBrush, he won't. Import, again, there we go. Let's just quickly go over the 
the polygroup process. Oop. Oop, there we go. And I'm going to say uh, polygroups, other groups first, and then control alt, hide uh, all of the polygroups that I don't want, those ones, and then group visible. There we go. I have my, this is my custom interface. If you guys want it, let me know and I can uh, throw it in there. It's just a couple of shortcuts uh, up here to make it a little bit easier. So I'm going to turn the groups and polish on and dynamish. There we go. Now, one thing I do, uh, I think we can do, and it might make things yeah, just slightly easier, is to split this into different subtools. So now that they have their own polygroups, it might be easier to just say group split here on the on the subtool menu. Just hit OK. And that way, we're going to have one tool for each particular one. So let's start with the pommel. I'm going to say dynamic solo so that we're only working here on the on the pommel. And as you can see, the, the hole looks a lot, lot better. Uh, I didn't really change anything, but it, it definitely looks a lot better. And I'm going to be using train dynamic. Let's start with train dynamic. Let me open the concept here. There we go. You guys can use full uh, pure ref or any other um, like software to, to look at the image, but I'm going to be using just like <laughs> the Windows image viewer. Let's go into ZBrush. And let's start doing the, the effect. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to use my move brush to start giving this a little bit more of a, of a buried edge because uh, when we were in Maya, uh, we, we were like kind of we didn't have an option and we had to do this symmetrically, but now we can actually work asymmetrically, style the mesh, and start pushing things in a nicer way. Now, this is gonna be for games. This 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 element, uh, I, I want this to be uh, going into a game. So one thing that you need to take into account for games is games hate when you have things that are super thin or super small, like like this guy's right there. So even though the, the edge is super, super sharp, I'm actually gonna use my train dynamic here to start like pushing the border and creating a sharper edge. That's also gonna help the retopology process because every time you have a 90 degree angle in games, it becomes really, really difficult to do, um, to do what's the word, all the, all the required elements. For some reason, I feel like Dynamesh is not, it's not working as I, as I would expect it to. So the resolution might be the resolution. Let's up the resolution a little bit more. There we go. It looks a lot cleaner. Let's just smooth that out. And sculpting rocks is, is really fun. I always find it very like relaxing, very like cathartic. I'm actually gonna uh, remove polish for now. I think it's, it's it's hurting us more right now than it's helping. So yeah. So looking at the concept, we have a lot of. Uh, like changes in silhouette here and there. We definitely need more resolution. Like we're only at 11,000 points, so that's way, way too little. Let's increase this quite a bit. There we go. It should be a little bit better. There we go. So as you can see, the detail now is looking a little bit nicer. So it's all about, in this case, I'm, I'm just using train dynamic. And the, and that's all I need to, to create like a, a change in the silhouette to make this thing look a little bit rockier. Later on, yes, of course, we're gonna be using alphas to to describe the form a little bit better. But for now, I think I think this is, this is quite nice. I'm gonna add a little bit of volume here and on the other side. And then with Trim Dynamic, I wanna create this sort of a hexagon shape that it had. You can kind of like a support. Very organic, right? Like we wanna keep this thing very organic, very, it's a very nice like sculpture exercise because we don't have to follow like specific pattern or anything. We can go a little bit crazier. Over here, I see some big chips on the on the rock. So for instance, with my clay buildup, I'm gonna start like removing a little bit of rock here and then using train dynamic to, to kind of make it look like a like a big hit, right? Again, those like sharp corners, not super desirable. I mean, they're not bad, but it, it, it becomes tricky. It becomes really, really tricky to, to hold. And, and yes, we can have like a, like a sharp edge, but keep the sharp edge like this, you know? There we go. Uh, clay build up again. Let's start like removing some volume here and there. Silhouette is very important, so, so chipping away from the silhouette and making those look like a like a jaggedy rock. It's gonna be really, really important for the for the whole thing. On the bottom I can see it even gets like this super hard Latin edges. So again, train dynamic here is it's the king because we can very, very easily create those shapes 
and it does make it look like it's a like a hammered surface or something. There we go, I like that. I'm gonna remove some volume. Even adding some volume every now and then is also a good idea. It's gonna give it more more life to the whole thing. And and you can keep some of the hard edges, like for instance, some of this right there. Uh, there there's no problem if we if we keep them because it's also gonna help hold the, the shape of the of the rock a little bit better. Uh, see some spikes in here. Again, some, some volumes being moved in different areas. You can have fun. You can definitely, definitely have fun, especially for organic objects like this, again, which are very like natural, like not, not man-made, they're supposed to be like magical or something. Um, like uh, art leads and, and the studios won't be like super uh, strict about like, oh, it needs to be perfect. Like I, I can see like this is specific edge on this uh, element and, and you don't have it. They're not gonna be like that. It's, it, that's not how it works. As long as it looks cool and it follows the, the general idea of the concept, you're gonna be fine. Kinda wanna mark the division there where it starts becoming this sort of like little legs to the side. Because I do see on the on the concept, I do see like a like an indentation here. So with the Damien extender, I'm gonna just create this sort of like change in silhouette. To indicate that that's where where that like rock is split. Maybe it's a different rock and uh, and we get this effect. I, I also see like a strong bevel like here. So we might wanna like maybe bevel this piece right here. I don't know, it kinda looks weird. Kinda like how it was looking right here. Again, let's keep pushing over here. I think some, some sort of detail. And uh, the tricky part as well is since we're doing this asymmetrically to make the sword look uh, really, really cool, we're gonna have to do it on the other side as well. So it's gonna be a little bit of extra work, but it's gonna be worth it. Now, some of you might be wondering, when when should we do like symmetrically things? Like, could we have done this as, as a symmetrical sword? Yes, of course. If your game needs to be like really, really optimized, then they're probably gonna ask you to make it like symmetrical. Uh, but I'm thinking this could be like for a God of War or something. And that means that we do have usually the poly budget to, to play around with, uh, with a lot of, uh, of volume or a lot of polygons. And that means that we can make things asymmetrical uh, without really causing any, any performance issue. One of my teachers, and I, and I mentioned this to some of my students very recently, uh, used to tell us whenever you're doing like a portfolio piece or preparing something for a project, don't don't limit yourself on the on like poly count and poly budgets and stuff like that. That that's the kind of thing that they're they are gonna tell you right now. No one's telling you. So if you can make this thing look super badass by increasing the poly count a little bit in certain areas, go for it. Like go for it. No one's no one's stopping you. No one's gonna be like, oh no, your portfolio is not optimized. No, they're gonna worry about uh, whether or not your portfolio looks cool. And then once you're working with them or for them. Um, now that, that's the point where they're gonna be like, okay, like you're gonna do this piece or this character and we need to be this optimized. And of course you need to know how to do it, but usually we all know how to do things like simple low poly stuff. So it's just a matter of adapting. There we go. I like it. I like it. Now I'm, I'm following with a principle here. And if you've been holding for the past 28 minutes, then congratulations, you're gonna get a, a final nugget of information here uh, for this specific weapon. Um, there's a, a principle that's called rest areas. Uh, I don't remember who I learned this from. It was a guy who did like hard surface. That's, that's all I can remember that. I don't, I'm not sure if it was Furio Tedeschi or some of like the top guys, they were giving a, 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 a speech at my school who back in the day. And, uh, and they mentioned that whenever we build something, we want to keep things in such a way that there's always a little bit of a rest area, which means that there should be areas where there's nothing happening. It's very flat surface, very clean, so that our brains have chance have a chance to to rest and and understand the whole piece. Because we tend to overdo a lot of things, like like really push things to the to the maximum limit. And when we do that, uh, the problem is uh, we we don't leave any any time for the for the brain to process things, and then it's it's not as clean as uh, we might have once, right? So. So like this flat areas that we have here from the original piece, I'm gonna leave some of them 
I'm gonna leave some of them there. And uh, yeah, the, the sword is looking nice, or at least the, the, the pommel is looking nice. This is the this is gonna be the first video, guys. Again, I, I don't wanna make this go like super, super long, uh, but I'm gonna be following the same technique. So in the next video, we'll continue with the sculpting. Uh, we'll continue adding more and more details, but I wanna show you something here because I think you guys are gonna like this. There's a set of brushes. I've talked about this once uh, before. They're very, very famous. And they're called the orb brushes. Orb brushes. So again, if you, even if you skip the head wall, you're gonna get a, a very nice, uh, like a point of uh, information here. Michael Vicente, he used to work for Blizzard. I'm not sure if he's still working there or not, but he released this thing ooh, a long, long time ago, like like six or seven years ago. And they're super famous. So if you if you wanna do like this sort of like Blizzard stylized effect, all of these brushes are really, really helpful. So if you wanna throw in a little tip for him, uh, go ahead, but this is, it's just an amazing set of brushes. You can download them. And once you download them and install them in ZBrush by uh, dropping them on your, um, on your folder, you're gonna have them right here. I have a couple of other brushes, but these are the orb brushes. So for instance, we have this orb rock noise. And it's really cool because as you can see, we can add noise to the element and it's gonna make it look a lot greenier. Again, gonna be careful. I don't wanna overdo it. I don't wanna add way more noise that I, that I need, but just a little bit of texture here and there really is gonna push my stone. And instead of having to, um, to sculpt all of that by hand, as you can see, I can very quickly do it here. There's also other brushes in the in the orb brush pack, like this orb rock details. Really, really cool. This one, I really like it, which is going to give you this sort of like a intense like cracks and stuff, which again, could really help certain areas of my of my piece. And it really makes it feel like it's part of the same like a like a like a like a single kit or something. So I really recommend those brushes. And finally, the burst like the nicest like chef's kiss uh, brushes. This one's the orb slash, orb slash one, orb slash clean, because these are just like little, little cuts that you can do like that. And they're like very blizzard like. So on the, on the bevel edges, you can add some of this, of this cuts and they're going to look really, really cool. So just be mindful where you add them. Make sure that it makes sense. Not just like randomly add them because you want to add them. Like make sense there, like on the, on some of the hard edges of the element. And there we go, just small little details. There's also another one. Uh, I think this is not in your brushes. This is another pack that I have, but I have this one right here, which is just like little spots. I really like this one. It makes it look like a little bit of erosion uh, going on. Um, I, I can't remember where I got the alphas. I was trying to recall last time I, I showed them to my students, but I, I really don't remember. And um, yeah, this, this also adds a little bit of texture to the whole thing. It's gonna make our uh, sword look really, really, really cool. Now, if, if I start seeing that I'm losing some of that like bevelly edge, I might go here with the trim dynamic and just like add a little bit of that edge back, like the trim edge back so that we can see the, the sides of the element, right? Like, like the, the detail is good. But remember, we don't wanna overdo it. We wanna keep it simple. Very similar to what we do in, the, in, the, in Substance Painter. We wanna keep it simple. We wanna keep the, the primary shapes uh, stable and uh, yeah. That's pretty much it, guys. So I'm gonna stop the video right here. Uh, we're gonna continue with this media project throughout the throughout the week. So probably throughout the weekend as well. And um, as I mentioned, eventually we're gonna get this into Unreal, and we're gonna have our character like running around with this like stone sword. So yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, make sure to like, share, subscribe. It really helps the channel. It really helps our views. Uh, and you know, more views is more support, more support is more tutorials. And that always keeps us uh, pushing forward. Thank you very much for everything, guys. Make sure to leave a comment as well. Uh, interactions really help us with this whole algorithm thing. And uh, I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.